In 2018, the Happiness Alliance hosted a panel at the 6th OECD World Forum, Statistics, Knowledge and Policy, the Future of Well-Being. Jean Crowder, former member of Parliament of the Canadian Government and board director of the Happiness Alliance and co-author of the Happiness Policy Handbook, spoke about challenges and solutions for integrating happiness and affecting system change in governments. Good morning, my name is Jean Crowder and I'm uh, bringing a perspective after having been in politics for 14 years, both at the municipal level and then 12 years as a, a federal member of parliament. I, I put this uh, quote up here that's been attributed to various people, including Einstein, who apparently didn't say it, that the de definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. And I, I really appreciate how difficult it is to change the ship of state. And certainly my experience in national politics is that there are a number of things that interfere with governments uh, and, and uh, policymakers making those kinds of changes. And I'm gonna outline a couple of them, but I'm gonna also uh, end up with saying how I think we can do it differently. So in, at the very outset, I think one of the challenges is, is getting information into the hands of politicians and policymakers that has them move beyond their current experience, their current way of approaching things. And, and, and GDP, or gross domestic product, is a really good example. Most of them use that as a tool to talk about economic well-being, and it's difficult to have them shift their mindset into considering a much broader range of measures to take a look at whether their, their country, their province, their state, their city is, is being successful, and what that success means. There's, there's also an inertia for politicians. Politicians are very reluctant to spend their political capital in making changes that could be perceived as being risky, that, that they may not uh, be able to predict what the outcome of those changes would be. And so because politicians have a self-interest in being re-elected, they're, they're not great risk takers. And so that, that inertia interferes with, with uh, making the, the kinds of changes that, that would be more beneficial to their constituents. Inherent in partisan politics and party politics, and not every country has this, but certainly in Canada, our, our politicians are elected largely based on the fact that they belong to a particular political party. And the goal of a political party is to at least maintain the status quo or to grow with the party base. And so when you have that kind of motivation, uh, it has politicians turning inwards so that their goal becomes not to serve their constituents but to serve their political party. Within political parties itself, it's very difficult to make changes. And mo again, I'm speaking from the Canadian perspective, but political parties have policies that they then they develop and then they run their political campaigns based on those policies. In order to change policy at a party level, most of us have a, a, a process with bylaws and notices and you have to take it to convention, have it uh, voted on by the party membership. It's very difficult, again, to make those kinds of changes and you have to do a substantial amount of work behind the scenes with lobbying, getting key leaders on side, lining up speakers uh, on a convention floor in order to have that change happen. Um, with, once you're elected, once you're in government, governments operate in silos. And it's very, again, it's very challenging to get departments to work across uh, uh, departments in order to bring change. And again, and this is a Canadian experience, we had something called horizontal initiatives, which they've now renamed intersectionality, where, where uh, they, there would be an initiative, say for example, you wanted to look at how gender influence uh, uh, had an impact on a particular piece of legislation. Each department would do a checkbox to say, yes, I've considered gender in developing this piece of legislation, but there was no coordination across departments, uh, no sharing of information. And so oftentimes you, you would get policy that would be counterproductive between departments. In my years of politics, I've, so I've come back to the point that John raised in his, pres uh, his, his presentation. 
The real answer to making significant change is to focus on the individual. And in political parties, in, in government departments, it's finding those decision makers, those key leaders that can actually influence change. Mm -hmm. And to work with those leaders within their departments or their political parties to start to affect change. And there are a number of ways to do that. So this is the solution piece. It's not all negative. The solution piece is to identify the key leaders and decision makers and work with them uh, to present a different way of measuring well-being. Grassroots campaigns are absolutely essential. So it's working with those key grassroots organizations to help influence decision makers up the chain, whether it's municipal, provincial or state, national, international levels. And one of, one of the things that uh, Lyra and others have, have talked about is the, the absolute necessity to learn how to lobby effectively. And uh, lobbying is a, it has a bad name, but lobbying can be a very effective tool to change uh, policy, to change legislation, to change approaches to particular pro pro problems. <clears throat> take success on the road. When you see successful models, take those successes on the road to demonstrate that that there is another way of, of, of looking at, at measuring well-being. And finally, use the media. So thank you very much. Join the happiness revolution by taking action in your life and in your community for a happy today and a sustainable future. Go to happycounts.org.